Hey everybody, Bob Babbitt here, Breakfast with Bob from beautiful Nice, France. Oh, we are brought to you by VeloFix, Polar, You Can Active, Premium Plus Sports Travel. We're at the Hotel West and our next guest, 2016 Olympian, Mr. Ben Canute. How about a round of applause for Mr. Canute? Uh, thank you. Look at that, we got a studio audience, I like it. Get him involved. So Benny, when I look at your career, uh, people know you're an Olympian, but really, where you really became uh, connected with the, the longer distance folks was when everybody became a Canutian watching you in Chattanooga, 70.3 Worlds, two years ago, go off the front. And it took a, what, a 110 half marathon from uh, Javier Gomez to catch you that day? Yeah, uh, it's just a great day for me. I was just following my game plan and had some right circumstances and found myself a few minutes off the front. And um, that, like this course, was fairly challenging. There's yes. a climb in there, um, not really a technical descent, but still some fun downhill. And then the run, unlike this one, was super hilly. So um, that being only my second full year of half Ironman, I was still kind of working my way into the half and yeah. was definitely hurting on that. But Javi just had a great run, and yeah, he, he snatched the crown there. So you know, each year I'm trying to take a little bit of payback, but we'll, we'll see. How do you balance, because I know the big goal is you want to be in a mixed relay for 2020 mm -hmm. at the Olympics, right? That, that's, you guys, the U.S. is in a position you guys can medal and potentially get a gold. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're still doing 70.3s. The balance, is that hard for you? Yeah, I've struck uh, with my coach, Jim Vance, yeah. um, a pretty healthy balance between the two distances. And it seemed, they seem to play off of each other for me. My yeah. strength from the half Ironman racing seems to help me with the prolonged hard effort for yeah. the super sprint racing. And then in the super sprint, I tend to get a little bit of extra leg speed for that back half of the half marathon and have some variability in um, pacing. So, you know, whereas some people maybe just hold steady the whole way, right. I can kind of surge and all of that. So so they kind of play off of each other, and um, it's it's a little bit of an odd approach, but we've kind of been able to cycle through the training and do some sections of volume and strength and then complement that with some neuromuscular fast stuff right. and um, has really just helped me kind of develop throughout the past few years. When I look at one of the best triathlons in history, last year 70.3 mm -hmm. in South Africa, it's like the Hall of Fame. It's a Mount Rushmore, right? It's Jan Frodeno, two-time gold, uh, one-time gold medalist, Iron, two-time Ironman world champion, Alistair Brownlee, two-time gold medalist, Javier Gomez, who's won everything on the planet, Ben Canute, and being in that race, could you sense that, man, this is pretty darn special? Yeah, for sure. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, like I'm racing these guys and we're all on the same playing field here. Yeah. So I can't look into too much about who's got this gold medal or that gold medal. No. Um, Cause they, I mean, for me, they all have targets on their backs and uh, <laughs> hopefully the roles reverse. And then I'm the one who has the target on their back and they're chasing me. Yeah. But um, no, overall it was an awesome race. Like we had a good group on the front and just people kind of throwing attacks on the bike and the run was just almost otherworldly with how fast those guys were going and yeah. left me with a bit of homework for this whole past year to try and get my run up to standard and hopefully be uh, racing those guys near the end. So when you look at that, I mean, all you guys were 21 for the swim, like 204 for the bike. And I mean, the biggest change I've seen over the last number of years is how fast people are going on the bike. Yes, people are running fast, but, but have you seen that? Just how fast, how, how have you had to change and adapt to the fact that people are going that hard on the bike? Right. I mean, I think I've seen this change. It started in ITU and it's trickled over into to all aspects of triathlon. And um, I, I guess maybe it's unfair to say ITU, but there have been a lot of good cyclists who have been come into the sport. And someone like Alistair Brownlee, who, right. you know, took a group ride and turned it into like he almost it. a hard time trial effort, like, yeah. even though you're, you're just trying to hang on to the pack in some instances. So I think it's triathlons developed into really rewarding the all around triathlete who has a strong swim bike and run because I mean even if you're uh, you know a really good runner nowadays you have to have the strength on the bike so you have the leg run or the legs to run so yes. um, yeah it's just it's been fun to be a part of and, and watch that development and be towards the front of those races and um, yeah this course for sure is something that will complement an all-around triathlete last year uh, to win it Jan Ferdinand ran a 106 
to get second, Brownlee ran a 107, right? And Javier ran a 108. And I think you were like 111, 112 right in that yeah, ballpark. Right well, I mean, and you think about it, in Chattanooga, you ran 116, mm -hmm. and that was fast. And then yeah. here you are, go 112, and you're still a couple minutes back of those guys. But after that race, Jan Ferdano messed up his hip. Uh, Alistair, the rest of his season was pretty much done. Javier came to Conan, certainly didn't have the type of race he wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And then uh, talking to Jim Vance, he was like, Ben was pretty messed up from that race, yeah. too. It took me a long time to recover from that. That was right. uh, it was a hard effort overall. Yes. Like everything was pretty full on. Um, the run especially, I think, took a lot out of people because it was just fast from the beginning. Um, and could you yeah. believe how fast those guys were running? Uh, I mean, I knew those guys were fast, but I I didn't really have any idea how fast it would be. But I just tried to to stay in the game, and I was hoping that you know the three of them would be running that fast, and one of them would crack, but. Didn't have anyone crack big enough for me to uh, take advantage of that. So um, that was kind of, I was kind of like waiting, waiting for it yeah, to happen. Yeah. Just never really happened. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm continuing to work on the run and uh, they set the bar even higher from where we were at, yes. um, you know, the previous years. So um, we went back to work and hoping to show that off this weekend. And so you're, you feel that you're running faster now than you've run before. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Yeah. And in terms of the, the, this is a very technical course, mm -hmm. long climb, and then a pretty tenacious descent. Does it suit yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, I think any course that's hard, any race that's hard suits me. Um, I just enjoy it when the pace is hot and yes. it's kind of a war of attrition, which I think this is going to be. Yes. Um, it yeah, could the be bike hot is, out there too. Yeah. And the bike is pretty tricky. Like, uh, of course, everybody's been talking about it, but um, I don't think it's something where, you know, you climb and then you just point the bike downhill and you're just resting up the whole time. It's pretty... Uh, it's pretty much a power descent too. Right. So you gotta be pedaling the whole time and pacing is gonna be key. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see how guys play their cards and some are, are gonna go real early and we might see fireworks at the end and some are gonna kind of sit and wait and we'll see some fast finishes. So I know for, we just had the test event in Tokyo to qualify for 2016, uh, 2020. And for the mixed relay, is that something you qualify for? Do you get chosen for? How, when will you potentially find out you're going to Tokyo? Yeah, so we, we're waiting until May now. So okay. um, uh, to be selected for the relay, it's a discretionary process. Right, okay. So there's still a chance for um, uh, some males to qualify automatically in the Yokohama test event. Right. So the, yeah, the criteria can get a little complicated that way. But essentially, I'm just trying to prove myself as the best asset to the relay. And uh, yeah, I really want to win a gold medal on that. And so would, you, would the idea be to try to race in the open race as well or just mixed relay? Uh, so the way it works is uh, with triathlon, they didn't allocate any extra people spots. So you so have to be there as yeah, part of a team. Yeah, you have to be there. So if you're racing the individual, you can race the relay and vice right. versa, but you only get two to three total triathletes per gender. So there's no, you know, just having, some teams might have just solely relay people yes. and you might see some people if they're not, anymore in the in the metal contender mm -hmm. category for racing they might save themselves a bit for the relay because right. at the end of the day you know a few days later everybody's going to be racing for more medals so it'll be interesting to see the type of strategies that people use to uh, to race the relay for people who have not seen the mixed relay i don't think there's anything that's been developed that's more fun and so great for tv yeah right? it's perfect for tv you what you you jump in and swim with 300 meters three mile bike yeah. and then a mile run and then tag off and there's two guys and two women you can divide it up any way you want uh it's it goes girl guy girl it does, guy. okay yeah yeah so, so it's that and then yeah everybody does a super sprint yes. it's really fast lead changes so jumping off like, the dock and the yeah. whole bit it's exciting it's i think it's one of the most exciting forms of racing so it's uh it's really dynamic and um you're on the edge of your seat the whole time are you the anchor well, I can't give away any strategy. Oh, but, uh, there's nobody it, watching. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, it's me and you. There's nobody here. <laughs> that's how it was in Tokyo at the test event. But we'll see. We're still, uh, I think USAT is taking a look at all the athletes and really trying to take their time to make a, a decision so that so, we walk in with the best medal uh, contention relay. Love it. How about a round of applause for Mr. Ben Canute? Thank you. And thank you so much for taking time. Yeah, of course. Breakfast of Bob and Nice France edition. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.